Hello and welcome to another episode of DCU Daily. And today we are talking about Joker Folia De. That's a that's a movie that uh, well there there's there's been a lot of uh, good behind the scenes pictures that have been coming out recently, and so we're gonna probably look at a few of those. But the topic today that that uh, John brought up to me recently was the budget. The the first movie was made for a paltry fifty five million dollars of which Warner Brothers only footed around 60% of and they brought in like two other co-financiers for their other 40%. And we'll talk about like, you know, um <laughs> how much they probably regretted that and then, you know, of course how much those other two co-financiers uh had the exact opposite feeling about it because they made out like <laughs> like bonkers amount of money because of how, ex- how successful Joker was. But of course, when it won an Oscar or two, Warner Brothers decided we're going to make a second movie and throw everything we've got at it because now like Deadpool 2 there you know when Fox realized that this is this is going to this is like a phenomenon like a cultural phenomenon Warner Brothers wanted to capitalize it and for a movie that was in its original release not even supposed to have a sequel and Todd Phillips said as much and Joaquin Phoenix said, Phoenix said as much we now have a sequel that's on the way, coming out in a few months. So to, today we're going to talk about the budget. We're going to talk about what that means. What does it mean for Warner Brothers as a studio? Maybe what their philosophy is right now as a company under David Zaslav's re- leadership with Warner Brothers Discovery, you know, which is different than uh, what was uh, in place when the first Joker movie came out. So, John, let's talk about this. But before before we get into the topic, of course, as always, how are you doing? What What, what have you been up to? uh nothing much just kind of you know i heard about this news and i'm like damn i kind of want to talk about it mainly from an opinion base rather than like a news base because not right not much to talk about in terms of news but the main thing is uh yeah now this movie is gonna cost 200 million dollars and i'm just like thinking how and uh what money are you embezzling there what what <laughs> money are you laundering Lazaslav? because that's what it kind of feels like a little bit right now um, and it's a fair point like like the first movie was basically at this point a quarter of the budget of this of the sequel yes yeah. that's that's a big jump yeah so and uh... so it just seems like like a big giant question mark so now do i believe that tyler phillips uh tyler uh todd phillips todd phillips yeah yeah i'm i'm tired (laughs) um todd phillips obviously he is doing you know he does have a good amount of creative control on this because he wouldn't have come back otherwise you know as well same with you know joaquin phoenix so they would have not come back if he didn't have some sort of creative control so i do think that's there however i do think there is a bit of like wb mishandling stuff like they always do so i think it does it's just a little bit curious a little bit that you have just like you had this rinky dink little movie that nobody believed in and it went on to gross ability everyone's like oh it's gonna cause like shootings and mass riots and all this other stuff just like you know like the joker character because they don't people can't seem to understand that you know separation of art and reality um so they're like oh it's, and then nope it just had pe- people taking pictures on stairs that that's that's all the, that's all the controversy we got folks so so it was this movie and then it made a billion dollars now you be like okay well a lot of things make it even you know indie films can make a billion dollars well the thing i always like to mention when it comes to the first joker is it made a billion dollars without China, which is a big thing. Cause I mean, oh yeah, Aquaman made a billion dollars, but that like like 75% of that came from China. So it's like, you know. Well, not it, 75%. Not like, 75, but obviously I'm but being hyper. Significant but, yes, yes. Yeah, a significant chunk of it. You know, then, yes. Uh, I gotta do it for the entertainment, be like, what? <laughs> but yeah, so so you have all that. You have it made it without trying to, and then on top of that, I always love to bring this up just to piss off Star Wars fans. Is it did make more money than the Rise of Skywalker? It made about a million dollars more than the Rise of Skywalker. So that is that saying a, better a movie. lot. And it's it is a much better movie. And but uh, but you know, 
uh, Star Wars apologists will always get angry at that fact, which brings me joy. But even then, like there was there's a lot with this movie. Like and we got Joaquin Phoenix finally got his first Oscar because of the performance in this movie. Um, and it 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 had so much. And usually more often than not, when a studio doesn't believe in a movie, it does better. Because you know why? They keep hands off. They don't care. They don't when when they're micromanaging everything, it's it's obviously it's a worse product because it's not a director's creative vision. It is a studio's vision. That's why Marvel's in the shitter right now, because you know, Kevin Feige and all those producers are micromanaging every facet. Yeah. And we're getting this like terrible yeah. universe that's not letting Which... people be creative anymore yeah so same with star wars so mm -hmm. sure you have like mandalorian that people still like but it's for the most part like you have these big franchises that are getting micromanaged to hell because there's so much like oh we need to like have our hands in the cookie dough constantly so we have it perfect and all this shit warner brothers one of the few times they made a good decision was like no they were gonna just do whatever we want because uh we have this you know, big budget DCEU that we're going to worry about where we're going to make a ton of money. Meanwhile, this was like the highest grossing DC movie uh, at the, you, I don't know if it made more than Aquaman, but like it made around the same amount, I believe. Um, but yeah, it was like one of their biggest hits at that point in terms of like money. So it's like, obviously it gets a sequel, like no way. Like it, 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 I think, but here's the thing I get a little curious about is I think partly Todd Phillips did it because it would have been like, okay, well, we're going to make a sequel with or without you type of thing. Cause it's like, we're going to make a sequel. This made to like, kind of like how like, oh yeah, Top Gun Maverick is going to have a sequel. It hit with that much money. It is going to have a sequel. So it's kind of like that where Todd Phillips, I wouldn't say he was forced, but he you know, there was a little bit less of like, I want to do this project because I believe in it and more like, okay, I will try my very best to create a great product because WB is somewhat kind of forcing my hand. So there is that. And number two is like putting that much money into it. So it, there's even more writing on this. You probably, they probably need to make a billion just to break even at this point, because with the budget itself there it's probably gonna have a ton of advertising it's probably gonna have like it, it's you know it's gonna have like necessary research all this other stuff that's gonna add on to the budget and you have all and then you have like this big pop star as your leading lady and she's playing you know uh this pop this fan favorite character that she, it's now kind of dwindling at this point. So, you know, in terms of popularity, so you have like all this, like not, and it's just WB just continually making bad decisions. And the thing I will bring up that it reminds me of was it's going to sound silly, but the thing that I think of when it comes to a movie that worked and then a sequel that bombed is the original Mortal Kombat. That was a movie that I think it was produced. It was at least distributed by New Line. I don't know if they produced it, but it was produced by either New Line or somebody else. And they're like, okay, this is a video game movie. Nobody cares about video games, blah, 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 whatever. We're just, eh, maybe we'll make a buck from this. Who knows? So they got Paul Debus Anderson. They got this cast. And this was one of the few movies at the time that's like oh a video game movie that was actually well liked by fans and made a ton of money so they were like oh my god it made money now we care because they were like oh you'll do whatever we want we don't give a shit about this do whatever the hell you want okay i guess we'll fork over some money for like reshoots and you know additional fight scenes and that kind of thing but it's like oh my god this made money well now we have to care because so we're going to hire this other guy. We're going to replace 90% of the cast because none of them want to come back. We're going to get, you know, this terrible script, all this other, all this other stuff. We're going to do everything. We're going to hopefully have lightning strike twice and it completely bombed. And it is considered one of the worst video game movies of all time. 
So that's what I think of. That's what's going on in my head whenever I see. Am I excited for it? Sure. I I hope that Todd Phillips, Joaquin, and Lady Gaga, they have something there that will at least produce a pretty good movie. I don't think it's going to get Oscars. I don't think it's it's probably going to bomb with how much money it has behind it. And it's not going to, they're not going to eat just lightning strike twice. It just, that just doesn't happen. It just can't happen. So no matter, and even though it's doing some like kind of interesting things, like making it like a really dark musical, like repo, the genetic opera or something like that. Sure. That could work, but I feel like WB is just making all the wrong decisions because they're, you know, they're throwing more money at it. They're more involved in production they're trying to make another hit, and the thing is, when you try to make a hit, it's not going to be a hit. And that's 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 really okay. The- yeah, and I look, you're making a lot of fair points. Um, I we're usually on the same page on a lot of things. I will come at this from a slightly different angle. So, from the fi- finance side, I think the budget of two hundred million, which we recently found this out because there was an article in Variety where they were talking about the Tom Cruise deal that Warner Brothers signed, which you know gives him an office on their lot, and it looks like at some point they're gonna probably develop some movies with him when you know he finally frees up from the Mission Impossible movies, the one where he's going to space with SpaceX, and and of course um, he's got you know the, a, a bunch of other stuff going on like the, the Top Gun Maverick sequel now at Paramount, so he's still got a lot of stuff before he gets to Warner Brothers proper, but. The other story there was the, the the budget of Joker 2 went up to like 200 million, which now the thing is, it's not it wasn't news that the budget was going to be a lot higher than the first movie because the first movie made, had a budget of it was 55 million dollars. And I pulled up this article when we were, I was researching how well people did financially, like the people who co-financed that movie. The first movie, as you said, rated R. $55 million budget. They basically like said, hey, Todd Phillips, this is what the, all we're willing to give you. Hopefully you go away. It took a year for them to actually, you know, get the movie up, uh, up and running for Todd Phillips to even convince Warner Brothers to like make it happen. And then Warner Brothers were, and then Walter Hamada were so, you know, not into the idea of this movie even being a possibility. Because you got to remember at the time, Jared Leto's Joker was not doing particularly well. And we were, you know, moving further and further away from Heath Ledger's iteration. And it seemed like this, on top of everything else that the DCEU was struggling with, would have been a potentially another disaster in, in the company's view. And this is before the current regime of David Zaslav and the Discovery, you know, folks that, that, that bought out Warner Brothers. So different people, but they had such little confidence. They only financed 60% of that $55 million budget. Which, if you want to do the math on that, I guess 10% of 55 is 5.5 times 6. You're looking at around, I don't know, like, five, well, 50%, like 20, 30, 25, 30 million dollars, roughly. Um, and a little over that. So, the rest of the 40% came from, um, I think it's Village Roadshaw and, and Braun uh, Creative, which were, they're two regular collaborators of Warner Brothers, especially Village Roadshaw. Um, and they finance a lot of their pictures, but the fact that they took up around 40% stake, that meant that Warner Brothers then had to share 40% of the proceeds, whatever the profit was, with those comp- with those financiers. Now, of course, um, we don't quite know what the breakup of that is for this movie. It may be that those financiers are still just as involved, um, and that might be helping Warner Brothers like justify some of that extra spend because they're not putting all of that money in themselves. But given that the movie made, like you said, like one point, I think it was one point oh six billion dollars, and I looked it up by the way. Aquaman made one point one three four, so Aquaman still is the highest grossing DC movie of all time. And so uh, Joker lands either at number two or number three, depending on. I think it's number three because The Dark Knight made like one point one some odd billion, and then The Dark Knight Rises made one point oh something billion. So it's somewhere in the top four. Uh, it might be a three. I, I have a feeling that's where it lands. But still, like, you know, two Batman movies that are probably the greatest Batman fran- trilogy of all time, if not the greatest, you know, superhero trilogy of all time, in my opinion, and Aquaman, you know, the, the height of the DCEU. Um, and this is the only movie, whereas all of those other movies had at least 100, 150, and with the first Aquaman movie, it might even got close to $200 million budgets. And this movie had nothing of the sort. So... They made out bonkers, not just the fact that they, they made a billion dollars at the box office. This movie was big because it won Oscars. 
it won uh, it it won Joaquin Phoenix a Best Actor Oscar for a comic book movie that was the first time ever that it had won one one of the big five Oscars at 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 the set, at the Academy Awards and that was huge. So we knew that this was going to get a sequel and you mentioned that they were going to make it with or without Todd Phillips. I think the more important thing was they weren't going to be able to make it with or without Todd Phillips because Joaquin Phoenix had to be convinced to come back. And un- until Joaquin Phoenix said yes, like nothing can happen because clearly they weren't going to recast the Oscar winning actor for the movie in the titular role. Um bringing in Lady Gaga I think was always going to be an expensive move that that article in Variety points out that her payday was 12 or is 12 million dollars not to mention she might be a participant in the uh, on the back end of it as well she may have points uh, in the movie meaning whatever profit they make she gets a certain percentage of that I'm sure Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix have some level of you know participation at that uh, you know scale as well and then when you look back when you look further down in this article the important thing to point out is this seems to be part of warner brothers the warner brothers discovery strategy right now which is why they spent so much money um with tom cruise bringing him on i mean they might not see the the the, you know reap the benefits of that for four or five years because of all the other projects he's already committed to and they've also have been courting christopher nolan to return to the studio that was his home for years until he went and made Oppenheimer at Universal after that whole HBO Max debacle with Tenet. Speaking of which, Tenet is getting a re-release, a limited re-release in theaters right now. So they're doing everything they possibly can. They, you know, and they actually, um, the the heads of Warner Brothers, um, uh, I think, uh, forget Mike DeLuca and Pam Abdi, they literally just went and they gave him a bunch of cash. Oh, you know, there's a bunch of extra money. This happened last year from the Tenet release that we owe you, and they basically like, you know. Like, hey, like a bribe, please come. And without saying as much, please come back to Warner Brothers. So they're doing this. Warner Brothers is spending money. And there's a bigger picture here that you got to consider that when they're spending $200 million here or up to, which the number was, it was looking like when they went into production um, around 150. That was the number I remember hearing. That that's like, and obviously that was already like three times the original budget, basically. But and then, you know, they did basically nothing for marketing for the first movie. So I'm assuming in this case, not only is it going to be two hundred million dollars budget, they're also going to spend a significantly larger sum on the, the promotions and advertising, the PA, trailers, posters, you know, like you said, a lot of ad placement because like they're going to need to offset some of these costs by showing like, you know, uh, some vintage brands or some vintage advertising because the movie still takes place in basically the 70s. Um, and and. All around, I think while the investment is a lot higher, and I don't think the studio is naive to the fact that if the sequel makes at least the same amount of money, if not a little more, they will get a significantly lesser profit. I don't think they care because they're thinking if this movie gets anywhere close to, let's say, if this makes seven hundred to a million to seven hundred million to a billion dollars. I think at that point they would have made a lot, like they would have broken even and then some. Because if they're three hundred million dollars into this and they've co-financed part of it from outside financiers, then their take that their uh, stake is even less than that. Let's say three hundred million dollars. They might be only sixty percent into it if you go by the precedent of the first movie. So financially, for Warner Brothers to come out of this with a positive and net positive, I think the movie doesn't need to make a billion dollars, even with the investment that they've made, and you know, studios, the traditional logic is, is that if the one first movie made a lot of money, the second will make hopefully as much, if not more. And while, yes, I love the fact that you made the comparison to Mortal Kombat because that will put a smile on so many people's faces because every time somebody brings up Mortal Kombat alone, I just remember the whole, like, Mortal Kombat, like the whole, the song, and then just the theme hits. I'm like, all right, yeah, I'm in the mood. Like, I'm probably going to go watch some Mortal Kombat clips on YouTube after this. But... It's it's great because that's the worst case scenario, I think, of what can happen. But you got to wonder, like, they've got the Oscar winning actor in Joaquin Phoenix, who granted that Napoleon wasn't the best movie and he's had a spotty record. He doesn't quite hit the mark every film that he does, but more often than not, he hits the mark. Lady Gaga, who, again, kind of similar. She's not every movie that Lady Gaga is in is the best thing of all time, but more often than not, she does 
quite well for herself. She's she's done she's done a pretty good job of establishing a you know making a very good acting career. Of course, the, the what was the movie with Bradley Cooper? Why am I forgetting the the? It was like the uh, fifth Star remake of A Star Is Born. I mean, you know that that it was a huge year for her at the awards, and and you know I don't know if I don't think she won any of the majors, but she was like nominated and they performed at the Oscars. So I think for her as as a star, this is big. For Warner Brothers, this helps them. There's a lot of built-in marketing that they can take advantage of here because they don't have to like go out and market as hard because Lady Gaga's star power kind of like helps draw in an audience. And that's something the first movie didn't really have. Of course, you had Zazie Beats, you had Joaquin Phoenix, Todd Phillips behind the camera, but you really did be, I mean, you had, Rob, you had Robert De Niro in the movie, but as far as drawing power for today's audiences, I think, you know, Lady Gaga brings something that this, the previously did not have. So that's going in their favor. I feel like they're probably thinking, yes, Lady Gaga is going to get $12 million payday and maybe some points, but that will be offset by the, the box office bump that she's going to hopefully bring. And then she's playing a role now that Margot Robbie ha- had made famous, but it's a role that, you know, with the animated show running, everybody can't, can't seem to get enough, or at least that's the perception of, uh, you know, that they can't get enough of Harley Quinn um, or, or Har- Harleen Quinzel, like which, however they're treated in this movie. And when you look at the pictures of the behind the scenes um, that, that we've been getting, it looks like they they are going for that feel like a the one big thing is going to be people are going to be like rioting to try to get Joker freed. I mean, I don't know how that happens. The guy like shot a dude. So, um he should be in prison for life at least. So somehow he's going to get free and apparently he's going to be walking around talking to himself or a version of himself. And then it looks like we're going to see Lady Gaga go through her full transformation. So I don't know when how I, I feel look, about that either, to be fair. Yeah, the whole, you start her off, like, that whole romance. Here's the thing. I think they hinted at it enough in the DCEU that I was interested in seeing how Jared Leto's Joker and Margot Robbie's Har- Harley Quinn, like, came together or where that couple was going to go. But we never quite got there. And we haven't seen that in live action yet. So that is something that's a bit of an unfulfilled promise that they can operate off of. Let's see how that looks. And if, when you look at an image like this, you know they're like on a Definitely theater production german expressionist kind of feel to yeah, it yeah it's it's it, what it feels like is they're committing to the bit of that musical i don't think the move, movie will be considered a musical proper because they've said as much like they said look it's not a musical it's just a movie that has music and dance song and dance in it which which i guess they're not you know in that sense maybe they're not committing to the bit but ultimately i think there's enough talent here that if that that we could squeak out a pretty good movie i do agree with you though it's it's a uphill battle if they if they are thinking of making another billion dollars easily because the lightning in a bottle kind of effect let's just look at the deadpool situation right fox had a similar uh uh, attitude towards deadpool where they gave that movie like 60 70 million dollars and barely a marketing budget they didn't even let them use most of the the, the really popular X-Men characters, which of course they poke fun at in the movie. Great stuff. And that fits perfectly within the character. At the end of the day, that movie made like almost a billion dollars. And then the second movie, which they gave a lot more, you know, money, they threw a lot of more money at it. They brought in some more well-known characters. You add Josh Brolin into the picture. That movie made just about as much, if not, a, I think it made a little more than the first movie. So Deadpool 2 was pretty much on par with a lot of the same talent in front and behind the camera coming back. So I think Warner Brothers looks at this movie and thinks less less of Mortal Kombat Annihilation and more of Deadpool 2. I think that's what what they're thinking about from a financial standpoint. Mm -hmm. And that's how they're justifying their expenditure. And they're also, of course, looking at the fact that whatever money Lady Gaga is going to be bringing home, she's going to bring, you know, she's going to return to Warner Brothers at least twice, twofold, with the box office receipts that she can help with. And yeah, one thing, one other thing I can agree with you, as much as this movie could be a totally, you know, runaway, you know, success, it can also be an absolute disaster. And I just think this is the kind of movie, or this feels like the kind of movie that's there's not going to be any kind of middle ground. Like the first movie was, I think, the same thing. Either that movie was going to completely, like, hit the wrong, in all the wrong ways, or it was going to be a runaway success. And thankfully for Warner Brothers, it was a runaway success. But I, I think that when with the talent that they have and the fact that right now superhero movies are not doing all that well, and even back when the first movie came out, the DC brand wasn't doing all that well, 
they got something very different from this movie. And I think that kind of like thing where you present something that doesn't look like your traditional by the number superhero movie, that's still a draw at the box office. And in fact, it's more of a draw now than ever, which is why the MCU is struggling because they're the definition of formulaic superhero filmmaking. And I think that when you think about it that way, Joker Fall You Do will probably be able to make his money back. And so that's why I have a positive outlook on this. I'll give you a chance to respond, but I mean, I've made, I made a lot of points and I probably ranted a little too long. But what, what do you think like, about some of the points that I made there? I, I don't know. I mean, you know a lot more about like the money business side. So you definitely have that's I feel like I, I just know I'm 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 like I'm on the creative side. So I feel like that balances us out pretty well. So, you know, like the specifics in terms of like that money side on what um what the 200 mil actually means, who's really behind it, all that kind of stuff. I just. I'm sorry. It's just so fun to blame WB. It's just, it's, it's like my favorite. Pastime. That's true. It's fair. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's just like, and the thing is, I think it just comes down to like a fear of like, I want this to be successful. Um, I, I do. I'm not the biggest fan of Todd Phillips as a director. Like, I mean, I don't like the hangover movies or war dogs or anything like that. But like, I, I mean, I liked the first Joker. I didn't love it like a lot of other people did. I thought it was very well done, but I, I wasn't like losing my mind over it. And I think Joaquin Phoenix did a very good job. Has he done better work in the past that should have earned him an Oscar win? Probably. But um, I do think that they both did in terms of their respective roles in the first film, a very good job. And... I again not a big Lady Gaga fan either, but I I feel like that kind of weirdly fits or like that like because originally way back when when um the third Joel Schumacher Batman f- film was still on the still on the docket they did either want Madonna or Courtney Love for Harley Quinn yeah um so it's like it kind of bringing in that pop star for yeah yeah you know Harley Quinn so like that that I feel like that's may- maybe a wink and a nod towards that um aspect. But yeah, I feel like that kind of fits. And I and again, I want this to be good. Um, in fact, like I feel like one of the I don't know if it is confirmed or not. I don't know if they I think they did. Um, I think it would have been really awesome if it was because I know full ado means like a shared delusion between two people. It's like a shared madness. Yeah, I think yes. that's what it is. Yeah. Um so that works. That definitely fits, you know, Joker and Harley. And I and I do hope that like it's not, you know, um I mean, we hope hopefully get like something more with that relationship. But I think it would have been really awesome if they had like Harley, it turns out, is just a personality of the Joker. I feel like that could have been kind of cool. Like that could still be sort of it's like it's that sort of madness. But, but we don't know that's that's not the case. Yeah. There may yet be that like ultimately we find out that the, there was only the Joker the whole time. But and that might be like too a, repetitive of the first one I with see, Zazie beats, yeah. beats right, the relationship. Right. It, so yes, probably absolutely. not. I just think that would be a really cool idea. And I just hope that like the way they do Harley, and I feel like with what's set up, how they do Harley Quinn is going to be a lot better than, you know, the Yas Queen girl boss that, that, that DC is trying to push on us. So I, I feel like th- there is there's a lot of good going for this. I feel like, there is a lot of bad going for it as the stuff I've mentioned, but I, again, I just hope it's at the very least a good movie. Like at this point, I mean, I don't give a fuck if it's a bomb or not. If I like it, <laughs> then I like it. That, that yeah. what I just forked over 10 bucks to see this. And if it bombed, that's a WB problem. That's an out of my problem. Yeah. If I like it, then I like it. If I hate it, well, I'll, you know, rip it a new one. But I think, um, yeah, I do think, I, I I just like I want it to be good, but I I just have so many reservations on. Ever since it got announced, I'm like I don't feel good about this. I want it to be good, but I don't feel good about it. Yeah, no, I I think the the there definitely are a lot of risks being taken here, at least on the surface, because again, you have to put a lot of your trust in Todd Phillips as a filmmaker, and Joaquin Phoenix as an actor, and and then both of them are gonna have producer credits on this, so they're very much. You know, it's a collaboration in, from the creative side of things. And I think that's one thing where, as from a studio's perspective, they're like, look, 
we didn't put our faith in them and they produced something amazing, which is a point you made earlier that, you know, then the studio went in and said, hey, here's all the money in the world. And now we're going to do things this way. And maybe maybe there were some mandates from the studio, although I don't know if that's so much true here. And you, yeah, you that's said just as much my, because, you know, theories. Yeah, because like the because the, the ownership of Warner Brothers is very different today than the ownership that you know went through and shepherded the first movie or you know the lack they didn't really shepherd it they they just kind of like let it exist um whereas it feels like the second movie is not only getting a lot more you know attention from the studio at large because i guarantee you that budget did not balloon to 200 million out of you know just spite or by accident it was right. very much you know intentional in terms of like just going bigger and so for todd phillips as a filmmaker i feel like this is an important moment this is this is where he can basically sign a blank check for himself or get Warner Brothers to sign him a blank check for the rest of his career and become one of those auteurs, like a Christopher Nolan level kind of an auteur where you make a big comic. It is, after all, still a comic book based movie, regardless of how much it leans on the comics or not. If you can succeed with that kind of a budget doing something like this and make the studio another billion dollars. That's that's basically what Christopher Nolan did before they were like, you know what, Nolan? All right, now do whatever the heck you want because you can't miss the mark. And and Christopher Nolan hasn't really missed the mark since. I mean, you know, financially, his movies always tend to do well, even though they're not like so front loaded. They are movies that people go watch and again and again and again. And I think that repeat watchability, that is the biggest thing that, you know, is going to drive the success of this movie. Because when you think about how the first Joker movie made a billion dollars. It wasn't because John, you might remember that movie did not like come out and and made like a hundred million dollars on its opening weekend. It was like more like avatar where it it started off at like the, the the 50 plus number. And, and then it just like, just kept going and going going, and snowballing word of mouth. Exactly. So now this movie is going to have a lot more marketing behind it. Granted, but you still need that word of mouth, even Avengers Endgame couldn't have made the, all the damn near three billion dollars that it did without the word of mouth and 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 you know people just talking positively about it and wanting to experience it in a theater with everybody else around them so ultimately i think this movie is gonna i personally think it's gonna be successful i the, i do agree with you that it's unlikely it's gonna be as much of a runaway success and certainly with the higher budget it's not going to be as profitable even if it matches the success of the first movie it has to go beyond that and that's what the studio will hope for, but it's not a guarantee. And I just think that where, how far the first movie went is about as far as a movie with this kind of a concept can go, because ultimately this is still a rated R movie. And that does kind of you know limit your audience a little bit. It's not your four quadrant movie that's going to go out and just automatically like a Star Wars film, make a billion and a half, $2 billion. You know, I mean, and even Star Wars movies don't all automatically do that these days. So uh yeah i mean guys let us know in the comments what you think about this do you think joker 2 joker folia de is that going to be a movie which will struggle to match the heights uh, that the first movie achieved uh at this point what like six years ago um or is this going to be a movie that that that's going to be a runaway sequel like a runaway success uh for dc and and really kick off the dc elseworlds label on a high note because that's the other big thing is this is the first movie that's going to have that dc elseworld label attached to it under the dc studios brand uh, you know brand and stewardship of james gunn and peter saffron so yeah uh this is gonna it's gonna be exciting to see where it lands i'm sure when the first trailer comes out we'll do a reaction we'll talk about it we'll break it down we'll go into our fan theories to what that means like i mean beyond just what the pictures have already shown us the behind the scenes stuff and you know until then you can keep dropping drop your comments down below follow us on dcu daily like if you like this video dislike if you didn't we appreciate the interaction either way and and of course you know subscribe for more content like this and in the meantime you you know until we are back talking about the joker uh for all you do you can uh go out there check out something dc related maybe the maybe the first joker movie and then come back and talk to us about it and we would love to hear from you uh so john as always it's been great talking to you and uh, we'll see you here on dc daily next time